All right, so it is back and rear delt day. And I actually thought that it was chest and shoulders. So I'm glad I'm filming this series because I'm losing track of the days and I was able to go back to my own videos and see the order that I'm doing things. So back and rear delts today, we're still in the home gym. Uh, I have a few prospects of gyms that I'm looking at that are gonna allow me to film. Uh, but as of right now, I haven't committed to any. So we're in the home gym. I am um, keeping in theme fairly exhausted. So uh, we have a wedding this week for my girlfriend's best friend. It's been pretty busy at work. It's just been a busy week. So uh, it takes a lot out of you. I've been getting these workouts in late. Last night was crazy late. I think I finished the workout around midnight. Right now it's 824. I still got to cook dinner and I want to film... Uh, a TikTok about cooking. So I got to film another video after this, but I'm just gonna just gonna get through it. That was kind of the message that I want to relate tonight about the workouts is that, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people struggle with this, but my biggest, uh, I guess, block is just getting started. Like I wanted to get started with this workout at 7.30 and I just kind of like, lollygagged for about an hour and now I, I lost an hour and everything's much later I'm not getting any more energy as the night goes on so if I'd have just got started at 7 30 we'd be doing it but um, ultimately I still use that kind of mentality now I said you know what, just go you gotta go so now that we're here and we're getting it done oh I don't know if you heard my back crack but it certainly did um, yeah, but now that we're in it, we're just going to get it done. And that's with anything you want to do. You know, if you're thinking about doing something, just do it. <laughs> Unless it's like something not good. <laughs> like, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Like if you think about offing yourself or something, don't do it. But if it's something productive and you're just contemplating starting a YouTube channel, getting a workout in, you know, um, finally talking to the girl you like, whatever the case may be. Don't think about it, just do it. Uh, now today we are prioritizing, just as we did before, rows, rowing movements. I'm of course gonna do lats as well, and I'll go back and forth between uh, mid upper back movements and lat movements. But we're gonna start with one of my favorite exercises, which is the cable row. And, um, like I said, you can pretty much do anything if you have a certain amount of equipment. So like this, you know, the only thing I'm really missing is like a foot pad to give me leverage. But I just end up, you can't see it, but I just end up placing my feet against the uh, cross member of the bench. And it pretty much accomplishes the same thing. Let's see. And this isn't going to be, I mean, it's always a warm up at the beginning, but I thought this would be a little heavier. Of course, I love the D handle. The D handle is like my favorite handle for rowing. And we don't waste too much time on the light weight. I'll probably, I don't know, I might end up stacking this thing out for the rows at least. This, uh, this rack system has like another, it has the foot plate and two low cables, but they're like really low, like to the point where I'd be pulling up a little bit. I've never even tried them yet since I've had this rack, but I might experiment with that. I'm not going to do it today, but I do need to try those out because it's kind of made for that. It just, I don't like the angle that the pulleys are at. All right, so I got 135 on there. Just now we were doing 100. And, you know, if you're trying to compare this to your weight stack at your gym, it's probably not comparable because what I've noticed is this weight stack is at least like 70% heavier than any other weight stack I've used, according to the numbers. So don't think I'm just doing 135. It's not, it's not like 135 at any other gym. Because like at Reds, I do 240, 250 on a row like this. 
So you can see how big of a difference it is. Right now we're at a hundred pound difference of what I normally do. And I don't know if this will be a working weight. We're just filling it out. Now I'm definitely gonna do more. I might just throw ahead and throw the whole stack on there. But uh, what I was saying about the low cable row that this has, and I'll probably do like a separate video reviewing this machine or this whole rack system in general, but the low row has two cables and then it has a bar that you could attach to both cables so you could utilize both the stacks. So if I did, you know, max out this stack tonight, I could always just switch over to that one and I'd have double the weight. So I wouldn't even be close to maxing it out. So it's a pretty great design. All right, so now I got the whole stack on there, which I think it said is a 155. Um, and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully this is a good working weight. I did, in, uh, in Sam's videos, you know, he's always attaching plates to the machine. And I saw in, on a TikTok, like so many people were like, someone needs to invent something that, for Sam so he can add plates to the machine. It's been invented. I'm actually about to get one in, probably, um, the beginning of next week because I ordered it like a week ago, but it's literally like a pin that you put into the cable and on the other side of the pin It's like the end of a barbell and they have it in different lengths four six eight inches So you can pick which one would accommodate the amount of plates you want I think I got the the six inch one because I figured that could allow at least three plates, which is obnoxious um, So they do make that the only thing is these cables are rated for a certain amount of weight so I imagine they make the cables a little stronger or like stronger than the stack just to be safe, like the max stack. But I guess that's the risk you run into when you start adding plates to a machine that wasn't meant to do that much weight is that you could break shit, could get dangerous. But yeah, I have that coming. So I could also just use that um, if I want to add weight to this stack and continue doing the movement like this. And I'll, I'll show y'all whenever I get it in because there's a, there's so much cool gym tech. All right, let's see where we're at with this. So yeah, I've officially maxed out that one stack. I did, was it like, I think it was around 15 reps with the cheaters at the end, but I definitely got a clean 12. And because I don't have the, uh, the foot pads to give me leverage, I actually can't cheat as much. So those reps were a little stricter. Um, I do have like the little like small weight attachments. I'll probably put those on there, but I'm not gonna mess with the low row tonight. We'll just do a little bit higher reps. All right, and um, I added the little additional weights. They're probably like two and a half pounds, and I added you know one on each little pole, so five more pounds. It's nothing crazy. Um, I'm at home, so I think I, I just heard my girlfriend saying something. She might have been talking to the dogs, but. Uh, yeah, it might have been five extra pounds. I really need probably like a, at least a 25 pound plate on there, I'd say. I, I don't mind doing a little bit higher reps, but the thing is, is typically on the first movement I do, I want it to be the heaviest one. And that's always the way I've programmed my workouts um, like for the last 14 years. It's like the thing that's the most neurologically demanding, um, the heaviest movement is gonna go first. And I used to structure my workouts where like, the first exercise was like three to five rep range. The next exercise was like five to eight. The next exercise was eight to 12. And the last exercise, or maybe another exercise of 12 to 15. And the last exercise was like 15 to 20. So it progressively got lighter. And the way I thought about it was like, do the most taxing thing at the beginning. And then, you know, I guess as you get towards the end and you're getting more fatigued, 
do like more just like fluff kind of pump work. And that worked really well for me. But now I just, I kind of try to go heavy on everything. Um, but especially the first movement. I always like to go heavy on the first movement. So, you know, 12 to 15 reps, not ideal. But it still feels good. Yeah, and as I've mentioned before, I need a, I think I need to lube up these poles, but it's not quite as fluid. There's a lot of pulleys to make this power rack cable attachment system happen. It's pretty impressive. Um, but the, like, I feel like at the gym, it's just smoother, the momentum. This one, like you might see, I go, shoot. It's because getting it started, it's almost like it's sticking. And then like once you get going, it's good. But then when you get to the end range, it's like just getting that initial, um, I guess, pull or push, depending on what you're doing, is a little more difficult on this system. And like I said, it's probably user error. Like I didn't lube it up enough, but we're gonna do one more working set on here. Then we're gonna move to lats. I think I'm gonna do some, uh, some chin-ups for the lats. And I'm not good at chin-ups. So <laughs> we'll see how many I can do. I probably can't even get eight to be honest. All right, I didn't rest quite as long as I normally would, but I got another video to shoot and I, I'm not really, I mean, this isn't really as heavy as I normally go, so it's not quite as taxing. Typically I have to take longer. It's really weird, you know, the higher repetitions supposedly are more fatiguing. That's why it's better to do low repetitions. That's what the science guys say. Less fatigue on the muscle with the same stim, with a, I, I guess the same stimulus for hypertrophy, but the heavier sets for me are way more like taxing on my system. So it seems more fatiguing, I guess you could say, now that I think about it. But yeah, if I do a set of like 15, I can rest for like a minute. If I do a set of six to eight, I want to rest for like three minutes because I'm freaking, I went hard, you know, um, even if both sets are to failure. All right. Last set on here. Definitely glad I, I bought the extra weight stack. I think normally it would be like a hundred on each side. So I bought an extra hundred pounds to where it's like, I think it says 155. It says like 155 on that side. But um, without it, we definitely would, would not have enough weight. All right, we're gonna do some, uh, some chin ups. <laughs> uh, we'll see how we do. All right, we didn't take too long of a rest because uh, because completely different. I was doing rows, now I'm doing more lat focus, so I don't feel like my lats are, are taxed at all. I'm actually changing this bar this weekend to a um, just like a straight across bar. I definitely feel like that'll serve me better. This bar, I thought it'd be cool, but I can't do... I'm not good at pull-ups, so I can't grip these and do a pull-up at all. I don't have the strength. Um, I don't like doing pronated wide grips. So this is out of the picture. Then these bend down and mess with how high. I'm, I can't get a, there's a certain level I can't get to because of these, or when I'm putting my, my dip attachment on, this gets in the way. And uh, this really isn't comfortable either. So just all around, I don't like this pull-up bar at all. And I have the other one. Just a basic straight bar 
I think that's going to do a lot better. We're going to change that this weekend. We're going to clean out this gym this weekend. And I'll probably end up selling that Echo bike and selling my rower because I never use them. I just like to walk on the treadmill. That's my preferred form of cardio. I'm not a, uh, a hit a hit guy, high intensity interval training. I don't care for that. Um, so might as well sell them. Maybe put it towards like a, a proper leg extension, seated calf machine. I don't know, just something else that'd be more useful. Anyway, uh, <laughs> there's really no warm up sets on this for me because I can't do many with my body weight. So um, we'll just get right into the working sets. We'll probably do three sets of this. Let's see how many I can do. Never been, I've never been good at pull-ups. Um, well, at one point, I will say, like I wasn't good at pull-ups when I was a kid. I couldn't like pass the fitness test usually. And then I decided when I was about 22, I was like, I'm gonna get really good at pull-ups. And I got to the point where I was doing like 25 body weight pull-ups. I had one of those pull-up bars that go in the door frame. And I'd gotten pretty proficient. I never did them weighted, but to do 25 for me was like a big deal. And, uh, and I stopped doing them and I pretty much reverted back to my previous state. But I also weigh more now. I weigh probably about 40 pounds more than that time. So whatever. Um, around the six to eight rep range is what I'm looking for. So that was like seven and a half. And that'll do. We'll do two more working sets of that. And then uh, I might do that. Yeah, I might do that low cable row that we... We just started doing. That sounds like fun. All right, so I just got a DM on Instagram. This dude, he's actually pretty jacked. And uh, he said, damn, bro, you're inspiring me to start YouTube. So that's like, I feel like one of my missions with creating content is to inspire other people to make content because I meet so many people and I'm like, dude, you should make content. Like they're in incredible shape. Like they'd be top tier physiques online. I've seen all these influencers. They look better than most of them. They're extremely charismatic, good looking. And they're like, oh man, I don't have the personality for it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, look at these jokers making content. Or they're like, oh man, if I was like a little bit leaner, like once I lose about 2% more body fat and I'm like, dude, you look like a freaking superhero. <laughs> and everyone has all these excuses, you know, oh, I don't know what I'd make content about. It's like, just start doing it. Kind of like what I said earlier. If you're even thinking about it, just do it, just do it. And you'll figure it out as you go. But like one of the reasons some of these influencers that you see now are doing so well is because they're all we have. There's not a lot of people making content. As much content as there is, there's infinitely more people consuming it. So you don't know, you might be, you know, the next big thing. So I'm hoping that by making these videos, daily videos, like I have a full-time job. I have a, a life outside of this. I have other hobbies. Um, I cook all my meals. You know, I'm not like, I'm not really sacrificing anything except a little bit of time to make these videos, just a little bit. And I'd, I'm be, I'd be working out anyway. If anything, it's actually making me work out more. So it's keeping me more consistent. It's also making me um, not skew on my diet. It's just overall improving my consistency. And it's fun to do. And I could potentially get some, some kind of clout from this. So, I mean, you could do the same. You could definitely be doing the same thing. Just put yourself out there. And you might not want to make fitness content. Maybe you want to make car content or food content or build Lego sets. Whatever the fuck you want to do. Just videotape it. Oh, God. Whew. Man. 
<laughs> pull-ups are not easy. Um, you know, one of the things about working out at the home gym is I miss the car talk segment, which is one of my favorite parts of these videos. Whether or not y'all like them or not, I just like doing the car talk. It's kind of like a little meditation state before I get into the gym. But I also don't take pre-workout when I'm at home because I'm already at the gym. Normally I need the pre-workout to get me going, to get in the car and go. But I'm here, I just have to walk <laughs> into the room. So, um, and it's like, what time is it now? It's almost nine o'clock, so I, uh, I don't wanna be up all night on 400 milligrams of caffeine. So I don't take pre-workout here. So I'm raw dogging this workout. No music, no pre-workout. I'm just going through the motions, one step at a time. And in about 30 more minutes, we'll be done. We'll have gotten it done. You just gotta, you just gotta do it, man. You just gotta start. Yeah, but then uh, <laughs> I turned the camera off for like two seconds because I had more to say. But like, I know some influencers think they're the shit and they, uh, they love to hear themselves talk. They just, they're full of themselves. But like, if you think that's why I'm making content, that's not the case. Like, I think I have a pretty mid physique. Um, I don't think there's really anything special about me. I just enjoy, I, I did videography and photography, so I just enjoy using the equipment. And I'm like, why not record it? I'm doing it. I'm doing it, as I said before, kind of like a journal um, for me to look back on, track my progress, and, and to help me stay consistent. So um, don't put that much pressure on yourself, you know? I'm not cool enough. I'm not fit enough. Whatever the case may be. It's like, you probably are. Um, like, everyone that's an influencer is just like a regular-ass person. I really feel like uh, social media and, like, the climb, the rise to fame of influencers, like, kind of wiped away the line in the sand. Because when I was growing up, like, the only people that you saw, like, famous people were celebrities. Like, people you saw on TV. And now it's like any old person can can post themselves online and blow up, you know, Charlie D'Amelio or whoever just like started doing like random TikTok dances. They were just a regular person, you know? Um, but I feel like when I was growing up, celebrities were kind of, they were almost like out of reach. They seemed like they weren't even real people. Like your Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, you know, all these like really famous Johnny Depp. But I feel like influencers really showed the human side of, of everything. And uh, it showed you that really anyone can do it. And uh, now what I'm saying is you can do it. You can do it. All right. Last set. And if you're bad at pull-ups, like me, I didn't do it just now, but the way I got good at pull-ups is someone told me that the eccentric portion of a movement has like a 30% carryover to the concentric. I don't know if that's correct, but basically he said, very knowledgeable guy. Uh, so I trust him, but he was like, if you can only do five, then basically kick yourself up into this position and then just do the eccentric and do as many of those as you can. So maybe I started off, I could do like five pull-ups. But I would kick myself up and do like seven more of just the eccentric portion. And it made me stronger. So, and eventually I worked up to doing like 25 pull-ups, like I said. I think my best ever was like 28. Um, but consistently I could do 25. So if you're not good at pull-ups, if you only do two, three, not even one, just, I'll show you without the straps. Um, but just what I'm saying is you just kick yourself up and then lower, kick yourself up, lower, and just do that till you can't do them anymore. And eventually you'll get stronger. All right. We're going to move on to that single arm, low cable row. All right. Moving on to the low cable rows. Actually, um, and I'll talk about this when I review this rack. I got the, uh, the rep landmine attachment 
and it sucks. So I bought the Rogue one and I've never used it, but the Rogue one is awesome. And last time I did back, if you watch that video, if you didn't watch that video, go watch it. But last time I did back, I did landmine rows and it had been a long time since I did that. And they were incredible. I felt incredible doing those. So I'm definitely going to use this landmine attachment tonight. Super excited about that. All right, let's see. That's not enough weight. I'm just gonna kinda replicate this on the other side. But these feel really great too. I highly suggest, I got this one from Sam. So I got the format of the video from Sam. I got the low rows from Sam. The guy has some good, uh, some good stuff he's putting out. That's why I like watching. Uh, but yeah, this is one of my, this is actually one of my favorite things. I, he said he doesn't like single arm dumbbell rows. This is essentially what that is. I, I really like single arm dumbbell rows, but, um, I also kind of don't like messing with dumbbells and the, the resistance curve of a cable is so much better. So I prefer this, but it is very similar to a single arm dumbbell row. So I don't get... Uh, the disconnect where he says he doesn't like those, but he likes these very confusing anyway uh, This should be a working set I would say And the only things I wish the cable went the way this rack is made. This is just the lowest it can go Which you know doing an all-in-one machine like that you will have some compromises if it could go like two inches lower That'd be awesome and I could always stand on this bench to give myself more leverage or get like a little, you know, a little elevation to stand on, which I probably will. But all I, all I do right now to compensate for that is just stand back a little bit to where it gives me more stretch in the bottom range. That feels great. <laughs> I mean, it really does. It's, it's crazy how good that feels. Um, doesn't feel quite as good as the landmine rows. Those feel awesome. But this is definitely a, a 9.9 .9 out of 10 exercise for me. I'm really enjoying this. All right. See, I actually like it. I like this. I like single arm dumbbell rows, landmine rows, because they're not as isolatory as some other exercises. Like I thought, I thought tonight that I might put the bench at an incline and get it on my chest and do these low cable rows at the same angle that I'm doing this, two arms at a time. So it'd be like a chest supported row because chest support is going to take all your stabilizers out of it pretty much. And it's going to isolate the back muscles more, which is better for hypertrophy. But the way my body feels when I'm having to use my core and stuff to stabilize, I just feel more put together. So I actually like it um, a little better sometimes than isolating. There's room for both, but I definitely wouldn't do everything like extremely isolating. I like to, to feel my whole system being used. So we'll take a little breather. All right, so we went up and weighed a little bit. I did 10 last time, but I probably had like a little more in me. So I wanna get closer to say around eight or at least failing at 10 would be good. I don't mind like, uh, I guess yesterday's leg workout wasn't too strenuous. It wasn't too intense. Got a solid pump, but it wasn't too intense. And then today, you know, I didn't have enough weight on the rows. Um, so I didn't go as heavy as I'd like. So you could, you could argue this workout's a little easier than the ones I've been hitting at the gym. 
But I don't necessarily mind that because I am working out with more frequency than I ever have. I'm definitely feeling, you know, a little tendonitis in the elbow, just some different things. So my motto right now is I will be working out every day. I'm not going to stop. But some days I might go harder than others. Some days I might do more volume than others. I'm feeling my body. I'm doing it intuitively. I'm not just coming in here and freaking trying to get injured. I'm just, I'm really enjoying working out every day. I definitely think this is a sustainable habit. I feel a lot better overall. Um, I just got to like listen to my body as well. All right. That was a good working set. This, this feels good. This feels really good. I would have never really thought to do this. I don't know why. You can pretty much look at any move you're doing and adapt it to dumbbell or cable or barbell. So, um, and it's pretty much probably all been done already. But if you want to get creative in the gym, just think about it a little bit. Man, that feels good. Yeah, but about, uh, about thinking about things and just like trying things out and seeing what works for you. I think that's like a really good message to preach, especially now with all the information available because there's all these scientific guys, you know, I used to think Jeff Cavalier, Athlean X was like the foremost, foremost authority on working out. And then like, he'll like say like, oh, the best five chest exercises. And Greg Doucette will come and say, you're wrong, Jeff. Like you're, it's actually this, this, and that. And so it's like, who's right, who's wrong? I don't really know. So you don't have to be a nerd about it. <laughs> you know, you can just get in the gym. I mean, listen to some advice, try different things out, but ultimately do what's feeling best for you. Like, you know, like if you're doing something for a few months, you're not seeing results, change it. If you're seeing results, keep it. If you're doing something and oh, you feel this weird, the way that pulls, it feels like weird in my scapula or something. Don't keep doing it or maybe change the body position. Like just figure it out. That's part of the fun of going to the gym. You get to figure it out. We're all different. So figure out what works for you. Um, based on a loose idea of what everyone else is saying. All right. I actually don't recall if I did two working sets already with the heavier weight or one. I think I only did one. But we're only going to do one more here. Then we're going to move down to, we're going to move to lat pull downs. And then probably landmine rows. And then I'll finish it off with the, uh, the rear delts. And that'll be it. I feel I have a solid pump right now already. It's like, I won't lie, I didn't do too many partials before I started watching Sam. So that's another influence he's had on me. But uh, I still don't always do them. It's only if a movement, if it's a movement that I really like and I feel like the partials are beneficial. Like on this one, I love the way it feels. I don't want to stop doing the reps. If I could do 100, I would with a heavy weight. I don't want to lower the weight and do 100, but if I could do 100, I would just keep going because it feels so good.
But even when I'm just doing this, I do feel the muscle like firing. So it still feels good. With the pull-ups, once I couldn't do like basically at least half a pull-up, I'm done. But this one, just like the slightest little, and it still feels really good. awesome that is awesome I am so glad <laughs> I'm so glad I built this home gym what an amazing little place all right lat pull downs all right so I imagine this would be a pretty good angle but this is pretty cool too I think y'all can see this so I just have my bench set up as a seat and then I got these little roll pads which thankful I'm so glad rep was out of stock of theirs so I ended up buying the rogue ones now I've never used reps little leg pads. This is like you can put your leg on it to do Bulgarians, but I use it um, to like hold my legs down while I do lat pull downs. It has a, a few different functions. I've also thought about using it as like a, a back of the arm stabilizer to do preachers. But yeah, I've never uh, I've never used reps knee pads, but judging by their other attachments for their rack. I really feel like I dodged a bullet by them being out of stock and just getting the uh, the Rogue ones because you just can tell how much nicer the Rogue equipment's made. It's a big difference. All right, so I just kind of lock my legs in under here. And this is just like the one I really love at the gym. It's double handle. And I forgot that I had these extra weights on here. <laughs> I was doing a little bit more, doing about five pounds more on the right hand. It also wasn't enough weight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it up to, we'll go to 75. We'll see what we're working with. Hmm. I wonder why that one does that and the other one doesn't. 75. All right. But yeah, this is, uh, this is my favorite um, a lat pull down at Reds. It has the independent arms with the little I guess are these D handles too with little D handles and it just allows a better flow I feel like a better fluidity of movement but yeah just lock my legs in under here I will go up a little bit on the next set. One thing is, um, so when I bought this rack, I have eight foot ceilings in the house and they make this model, which is the shorter model. And they make a model that's about, I think it's like 10 inches taller, maybe 12, maybe a foot taller. But I was concerned, even though by spec, the foot taller one would fit, I was concerned like, uh, I don't know, something would almost hit the ceiling. Maybe when I did pull-ups, my head would hit the ceiling. So I didn't buy the taller one, and that's a big regret because um, when I had my other bench, this bench is lower to the ground. My other bench was like two inches higher, and I, would, I couldn't fully stretch my arms at the top of the motion without it touching. But if I had the taller rack, I wouldn't have that problem. Now with this lower bench, we're like right, basically when I'm at full stretch, it's at the top. So we just barely made it, but hindsight, I would have bought the taller, the taller uprights. So if you have eight foot ceilings in your house and you're thinking about this rack attached and the Aries attachment by the taller uprights. All right, y'all, let's get into, I'm going to call that last set a working set. Um, we're going a little heavier this time. You know, in one of my previous videos, I don't know how many of these y'all watch. I was talking about how I made everything black in here and then my phone case is black and it has a magnet on it. So I'll stick it 
in different places in here and I lose it because I can't see it. And uh, that happened to me right now. And I was like, oh, I have my watch on. I'll just do the little, um, why don't I let y'all hear it? I was like, I'll just do that and I'll find it. But this room is so small and echoey. I have no idea where it's at. Like over here, it sounds like it's over there. And then when I walk over there, it sounds like it's over here. So um, <laughs> I have no idea where my phone is. And it's so funny because it's such a, it's such a tiny little room. And I'm like, I'm the king of putting things down in random places and losing them. Like I do that all the time. So I just like, I, I stick my phone to whatever. And I, uh, I just completely forget about it because it's so mindless. I'm not even thinking when I do it. And I do that at the, at the actual gym too. I'll like, I'll be like 40 minutes into a workout and realize that I stuck my phone to the first machine I used and I have to go back and find it. All right, lock myself in right here. do one more of those but I'm gonna take a little rest and search for my phone <laughs> I have no idea where this thing's at all right y'all I officially I found my phone <laughs> it was like I stuck it all the way at the bottom of the rack and um, it was just throwing the little signal everywhere couldn't tell where it was and it looked like it was like part of the bracket it like, cause the brackets stick off the rack a little bit and it just looked like part of the bracket. I would have, I, I was at quite a loss there. I was about to say I would have never found it, but I did find it. So I can't say that, <laughs> but it was extremely difficult to locate that thing. So make a note where I'm sticking, where I just stuck it, make a mental note. So I remember, all right, one more set here. Then we're gonna landmine row it, and then we're gonna do some rear delts. You know, there's so many options of things to do for back. Of course, you get like comfortable doing certain things, or some things you like more than others. But um, I got the urge to do some bent over barbell rows. Um, like I said, I like single arm dumbbell rows. I like, um, I wanna do like some. Uh, like how I was doing the D-handle rows in the beginning, I'd like to do some wider grip ones, um, like with a lat bar. What else? I don't know. There's like so much stuff you can do for back. Pullovers. And uh, you just can't do them all because it'd be too much volume. And sometimes I just don't want to substitute one exercise for another, but I really want to do it at the same time. So... I wish I could just work out like all day and my body would recover because I would try like so many different things. All right, let's go. Last set. Let's use the landmine row attachment. I've never used it. I'm super excited. I also have like a special, I'll show y'all. I have a special little rogue grip for it that I'm excited to use as well. All right, this is unprecedented, but we're gonna go vlog style because I wanna show y'all something. So that is the rogue, I mean the rep landmine attachment. And as you can see, it only pivots one way. So the reason I don't like that one, I couldn't even use it is because on the side of my rack, I have these machines. So the bar would have to come straight out. So obviously it's unusable for me. The Rogue one, way better design. It pivots this way and up and down. So I can throw this bar out to the side because I do have limited space and I can still do the landmine rows. So in my case, if you have plenty of room on the side of your machine, that's great. But if you're in a limited space, 
Um, the rep is completely unusable and the Rogue is amazing. All right, also real quick before we get into this, I also have this, Rogue also makes this grip for the landmine rows. So you just slide that over the fat end of the barbell, then you put your plates in front of that and it allows for more range of motion if you want to use 45 pound plates. Typically, you got to use like 25 pound plates because the 45 pounds are limiting your range of motion. And I'm selling you on these products and I've never even used them. But this is the first time I'm using it, so we'll see how it goes. Pretty exciting. All right, let's get some weight on the bar. All right, so last time at Reds, I mean, I'm good and warmed up. I don't need a warm up set. The last time I did 425, so it was 100 pounds worth of plates. I just slapped on two of the 45, so we're at 90 right now. And I'm gonna feel it out, we might go up. And once I get this floor space cleaned off, I'll be able to get a little bit better camera angles. I'd love to have the bar kind of going this way and I have room to do it. I just have a pile of junk right here. But once the floor space is cleaned off, this might be my favorite place to work out. I'm looking for a gym membership. There's actually two of them that I'm, I'm probably gonna get. And that's just for like change of scenery. It's like, see, the other gym, Reds, I got a complaint because someone didn't wanna be in the background of my video. But to me, that, that kind of makes the videos more fun when you see like other people in the background, when you see like, I don't know, I'm a people watcher. So like in my videos, everyone's blurry, but like in Sam's videos, I can see them. And I love when people like joke around in the background, like when they flex or make silly faces. Like to me, that's how everyone should be. Like everyone should just be like, life is fun, you know, just like chill the fuck out. Like who cares? So it really, it really grinds my gears that someone complained that they could potentially be in the background of my video. It's like, get over it. Anyway, let's see how this works out for us. Huh. This kind of feels crazy. Let me kind of choke down on this a little bit. All right. Love it, <laughs> love it, wow, wow, what a great, what a great exercise. Do y'all like landmine rows? I thought so. I figured y'all did because it's amazing. <laughs> oh my God. I just wanna do like three sets of landmine rows every morning. Oh, look who joined us. It's crew. Come on crew. Let's show you the camera. This is crew. Oh yeah. <laughs> Literally licked inside my mouth. I would leave the door open to this gym all the time so the dogs could come and interact with me. But right now with the floor being, having debris all over it, um, it makes for a little bit of a hazard because crew likes to pick up screws and little pieces of plastic and stuff. All right, let's take a breather. All right, we had some visitors. Let's see if this shows up on camera. Do y'all see these veins? They really look crazy in here, but I feel like it doesn't translate as much on camera. These lights, I was just talking to, to my girlfriend about how I would uh, change this, the layout of this room. Like the doors push to one side, but if the door was in the middle, I could have equipment right here too, like in this area, and it wouldn't be in the way. And I'd also put a pocket door to where it slides. It doesn't like open, which just makes everything feel more spacious. Um, so I might get a quote. I might get a contractor to come out here and quote me on doing some of that. But also the, um, the lighting, it's like, the rec we put recessed can lighting all over the house because this house had like no lighting when we got it. Um, like literally every room had like one little central light. So I mean, we must have added like 20 or 30 recessed can lights. We put them under the carport and everything. With those, 
maybe more. It was a ton that we had to add. But because we plant, painted this room black, it was like very dark in here with the bulbs that we used all over the, the rest of the house. So they put these like really concentrated bulbs, these really bright bulbs. And I do feel like on camera, it kind of washes out. Like I wanted this room to have great lighting for like physique checks and stuff. But I feel like this lighting isn't great for that. I definitely feel like it washes out the striations and, and detail because it's just, it's dimmable. So it's not that it's too bright. It's like it's too concentrated or something because I think it's too concentrated with the eight foot ceiling. So it's just too close and it just like the highlights are just way too high. Um, if I had to guess, because at reds, the, the lighting is higher up. And I think it diffuses because it's traveling further and it just makes you look insane. It makes you look so crazy. All right. Got a little debris under my foot. All right, let's see. Man, that feels good. It feels good, it feels great. But I'm gonna call it there. That was higher repetition sets than I normally do. So I'm gonna call it there, we're gonna do some rear delts. We'll get the pump check and then I got a, uh, a steak and gravy to make. I've been on a rice and gravy kick. It's incredible. All right, all right, now. Time for some rear delts. We're gonna do three sets of rear delts. Just burn them out at the end. I've said this before, I'm uh, let me raise this up a little bit. My rear delts are pretty well developed. That's why I'm not putting them at like the beginning of the workout. I don't really need to prioritize them. Supposedly everyone's rear delts are lacking. That's not the case for me. It's quite the opposite. My front delts are lacking, so. I just do rear delts just to do them. I love the way they look, but I just don't need to work them that much. Kind of like my forearms and my calves. All right, I don't know if this is gonna be a good angle. I'll watch this back after this set and we'll see. And I might move the camera. Double cable way of doing rear delts is phenomenal. Um, let me watch this back. I'm also gonna go up and wait a little bit. You can see like my forms, they've always been, they've always been quite, quite large. It's hard to tell, I guess, but somebody asked me for my forearm routine the other day after watching one of these videos, so. I assume it translates to some degree on camera that my forearms are kind of like stupid. But, uh, what was I gonna say? Shit. I've only been resting about 45 seconds, so I have some time to talk. I just forgot what I was gonna say. Um, ah, fuck. I'm gonna think about it as soon as I stop thinking about it. It's actually a real phenomenon. It's called tip of the tongue phenomenon, I think, where it's like it's on the tip of your tongue. And as soon as you stop thinking about it, or sometimes when you go to sleep, you like wake up and you're like, I got it. But right now I can't figure out what I was gonna say. Um, oh, well, one thing I can talk about is this rear delt. So this is something, this move in particular is uh, something I saw from like the optimal guy. So I'm not immune to optimal advice. Like I said, take advice from everyone, try it out. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. If it does, it does. But you know, everyone gets on the pec deck for the reverse flies and they go straight across and i saw someone saying that really the fibers run kind of like this like kind of like a downward like a little diagonal not quite 45 but maybe closer to 45 than a freaking 90. so um i tried it out and sure enough it does feel a lot more 
a lot less trap and upper back and a lot more rear delt. So that's how I do it now. And um, I love it. And remember, at the end of the set, you can just pull the cables if you're, if you're fatiguing. So I'll, I'll give you an example of that at the end of this set. Make sure we're in the right spot. This angle looked fine, so I'm just gonna keep the camera right there. And then you can just, to kind of just burn out, you can just pull. You kind of trying to pull them apart at the end. And it works a little bit of back too, but it's back day. So no problem with that. But you definitely feel some extra burn in the rear delts when you do those pulls at the end. So we'll do one more set and then we'll check the pump. All right, y'all, last set and then we'll check the pump. I'm not gonna lie. I feel pumped, I feel well put together, but I didn't take pre, so I don't have any pump product in my system. So I definitely don't feel as pumped as when I do that, I will say that. Like when I when I have the pre-workout in my system, the citrulline and whatever the hell else is driving that pump, um, it is a little bit it is a little bit freakier. Right now, I definitely feel like I did a lot of work, and I definitely feel bigger than normal, but it's not quite on the level of when I take pre-workout. I actually, I have, what I should have done is I have Pump Daddy from Rise, which is stem free. Uh, I should have done that. I did order Godzilla, because I've been using Blackout and it's like super high stem. Godzilla, typically I'll take like only one scoop or even half a scoop, so it's lower stem. But um, I definitely could have taken the Pump Daddy just to, to get a better pump. But we'll do that next time. All right, this is just proof that you don't really need anything. You can just come in here and put in the work. <clears throat> That's it. I'm ready for that steak and gravy, y'all. Steak and rice and gravy. All right, let's check the pump. All right, we'll go ahead and see what, what this 50 millimeter lens, I hardly ever use this lens, but if we, um, what's that? Do a little lat spread like this. I guess I have, I don't know if I have high lat insertions or, and my lats are really wide. I don't know, this light might not show it that well. I gotta turn a little bit towards the camera. I'm still figuring out where to set up the camera on this stuff. Um, and then of course, keep in mind, I wanna be able to like see how I'm posing cause I do have a structural scoliosis. So I have asymmetries. Like it feels like, I will say whenever I'm posing and I can't see, it feels like my right shoulder is so much lower than my left one. So I like, I like right now it feels like, like this feels normal to me. And you see how much like higher my right shoulder is. It actually feels like my right shoulder is too low. So um, I try to raise it even more and it makes me even worse off. So I need to be able to see what I'm doing and then maybe I can correct it at least to have a better looking pose. It'll never be symmetrical. When you have a, when you have a structural scoliosis, even your muscles develop like wrong, you know, like one side of your back's muscles develop better than the other one. So I can never, you know, achieve perfect symmetry. But with posing cues, I could at least figure out how to make it look as symmetrical as possible. I mean, I don't have such a bad scoliosis that 
Like when I'm in clothes, well actually, not only when I'm in clothes, but when I'm out of clothes, like my girlfriend, she's like, I'm pretty sure you're lying about your scoliosis. I don't see it at all, but it's definitely there. Because the only reason I know it's there is because I went work out with a guy in high school one time and uh, we, I took off my shirt in the locker room and I was like, I'm the fucking shit. I was like, I was really pumped. And uh, this guy, he actually, he was my girlfriend in high school's little brother and he, he looked up to me and that's why I went work out with him. So I was like, man, I'm gonna take off my shirt and he's gonna be so impressed. And I remember he said, I'll never forget it. He was like, why are you all crooked? And I had no idea what he was talking about because um, until that moment, I had, I couldn't, I, it's hard for me to see it myself, except when I watch a video. When I'm looking in the mirror, I really can't see it. Anyway, that's about all we can do for uh, pump check. The front lat spread, the back lat spread, did a little double bicep. So that is it for today's video. I'm going to cook a uh, steak and rice and gravy. So if you want to see that, I'm going to do a little tutorial. I'm going to put it on TikTok. So follow me on TikTok if you want to see a little bit of uh, what I'm eating. Okay, But I will see you all in the next video.